As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam uh, Is there any dua or, or tasbih recommended if one is facing disease or difficulty for which the solution is not appearing? Sayyidi, I'm in pain, please help. Yeah, I think uh, that was the talk tonight before you asked this question. So that was the whole understanding is that the du'as that we recite, they're enough for everything. Ayatul Kursi for every type of difficulty, the salawat and all the different types of salawat, all of them immense, all these blessings. The muraqabah to connect your heart with these awliyaullah. And then to keep the firmness of everything that we're doing. What are we washing? What are we eating? Uh, are we covering and, and doing all that's required for us to protect our energy, to seal our energy? If we did all of those and still there's difficulty, then sabr. This is then what Allah wants and He says, I don't test you beyond your ability. And that's just what our ability is probably not known to us of what we can endure if Allah give us sabr. But if you're not keeping wudu because sometimes they email and they say, oh yeah I'm sorry I don't keep wudu. So then what are you asking for? Of course you're going to be attacked. Then I don't keep my namaz, I don't keep the energy practices, I don't try to even do the muraqabah. That's why they have that whole system there. Now can you recite something and magically everything goes away? No, it's not supposed to and don't try to find somebody who says it can because then you're going to hand yourself to the gypsies. The gypsies of faith in which the caravan of despair, they're, they're going to ravage you because you're looking for a quick solution and the shaykhs are not supposed to give a solution, they're supposed to teach you on how to build yourself while as a allowing a difficulty. Because he wants you to be built up, he doesn't want you to go to somebody to take it away, Allah would take it away. Well Allah doesn't know how to do that, he saw why he knows how to do it and I don't. I gave that servant this difficulty so they would seek you out and that you would build them up to be good servants and keep all their practices. Some people are proactive, reactive, we described that the other night. Some people they just want to be good because they enjoy being good. And those are the ones whom succeed and they succeed uh, very strong. A reactive is that, I want you to hit me and then I'm going to go and pray. And they wait for Allah to hit them with the difficulty, they oh no I'll pray. Then hit them with another difficulty, oh, okay I'll stop my sinning. Then hit them with another difficulty, okay now I'll give my zakat. So you know, the, those people for some reason they, they don't operate without a difficulty hitting them. And we have to become in our lives proactive that we go over and above without Allah hitting and, and, and giving a trauma and difficulty into our lives. We don't need proof that Allah will make difficulty for us. So we try our best to be good and, and to be good servants because we're entering the ocean of love. The character of somebody who's reactive is not from muhabbat. And that nothing will change for them because they're not from muhabbat. They're waiting for Allah to punish them, as a result they'll change their character. But that's not love. The one who loves you, he does what he does out of immense love and he wants to do even more to show their love. And that's what's important to when that's sincerity, that's when Allah says, you did your wajib. And now you're approaching me with voluntary, it means you're coming to me with love, you did what was mandatory. I'm going to be the hearing in which you hear and the eyes, means Allah is giving a gift for the one who came with love. Not the one who had to get the hit because he didn't pray, got the, lost a job because he was doing bad things. This is a reactive, the proactive shows an immense, immense love for the Divinely Presence and this is the character we pray that Allah give us all inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Uh, when I do the meditation and muraqabah, uh, who am I connecting to? You follow your heart. 
that type of question you have to follow your heart, who do you want to connect to? There's no shaykh that can say, connect to me but you have to have your love for your shaykh and the one who's teaching you and guiding you. And then when you want to connect your heart you look for Sultan and awliya and ask to be dressed by Shaykh Nazim, Shaykh Daghestani. So alhamdulillah follow your heart if you say, well you read all the teaching and you're still asking that question, so do what you want to do. Otherwise the teaching was very clear. <coughs> Sayyidi, Salaamu Alaikum Walaykum As Salaam uh, What are good ways to break the habits, bad habits like for example weed? Yeah the bad habit is to think that in a world of difficulty and in a world where everyone's dying with no breath and if you want to smoke and, and, and contaminate the lungs and, and destroy all your spiritual energy and no spiritual growth then you're going to be one of those reactive ones where difficulty has to come to motivate the person to stop. So we have to come to the mentality this is not a world in which we can just do whatever we want, people are dying, people are in, in, in hardship. If I'm inspired to do good and to elevate then I have to look at the purity of my character, purity of my heart, purity of my lungs, all of that for the Divine light to enter in. How to stop? making your durood, making your salawats, keeping your wudu and, and keeping you know the good company. The company you keep is very important, you know if you keep the company of people who are trying to improve themselves versus you know the company of the same friends that are always trying to harm themselves. It's not you know going to be miraculous if you hang around people who want to do that, you're going to do that. If you fool yourself thinking, no I'll, I'll abstain from it. So we have to change our whole lifestyle to be around the people who want to do good and I have to change what my understanding is to want to be good and to want to do good, inshaAllah and Allah gives the support and then we, we do our salawats, do our energy practices, do everything. Whether it's marijuana and poisoning yourself, uh, pornography and inappropriate images, uh, characteristics and flirting on the internet and flirting and typing, all of these things are going to bring you know difficulty into people's lives. And that's again that reactive where they have difficulties and things are not opening for them and then Allah is, is going to have to punish and then teach the person, don't do that. And then they have to make istighfar and then try to, to reach towards where Allah wants them to reach. But it's better to do an accounting of oneself and say, I don't need to do these things. Ya Rabbi make me a better person, I want to be a better person so that I can reach to a trust and reach to a, a trustworthy character in which I'm trustworthy inshaAllah. Salaamu Sayyidi, there was another question someone was asking related to this. Uh, what's the best way to avoid these bad friends? What's the best way to avoid the bad friends yeah. is just change your friends. Mm. You know you have to make a whole new set of friends and, and you're not the only one, everyone in tariqah you know, you, you go into isolation. That was the story of the Surat al-Yusuf. So when you want to understand tariqah read Surat al-Yusuf, the 12th Surah of Holy Qur'an. And that's a whole understanding that you know even his brothers are prophets but Allah wants something different for his reality. And Allah throws him into a well and his brothers throw him in but Allah wanted him in the well because he wants to send him to a different group, a different person to be trained, not his father and not his brothers. So there's a, a point of isolation, there's a point in which we leave the circles of people that we know until we can you know go into our own isolation and then the circles of the people of tariqah and the people of haqqaiqs and people who want to build themselves and perfect themselves. Very difficult to build yourself if you're surrounded by people who want to harm themselves and, and very difficult to build yourself when you're surrounded by people who say you don't need to do all of these things because those are the people of you know belief that nothing matters and you don't need to do these things. So you're working against your, yourself and making everything difficult. So that's why you tried to find a fellowship and now alhamdulillah Allah made it easy because everybody's isolated. 
everybody just isolated and go on to your, your live uh, group and, and listen to the zikr and uh, listen to all the talks, subscribe to the channel so that a talk comes every day, they load a video every day and every day you have a, a lesson and when you finish that you can go into more lessons and learn the tariqah. There's not much time left and make sure that you can connect your heart and that you're getting these understandings and that the, the real pandemic are people and the real sickness are people and people pollution of what people send from their hearts and from their minds of, of their pollution, their, their sort of uh, corruption and thoughts and, and their desires and how they put that upon other people. Especially the, the, the youth now, they're all in difficulty of you know what, what these people are posting and that's how we started this whole talk. Nothing is appealing to anyone because they're looking at Instagram and looking at social media and comparing everything with you know somebody else and they're not just content with what they have in life. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As what is the adab when asking for mad madad? Can we ask as many times as possible or at certain times? No, the full madad is your… the adab is, is that imagine the shaykh is with you. So you're going to call upon them, it has to be real for you that the shaykh's light is coming with you. Would you call him in just any location? If the location is not correct, if the people are, are not uh, you know correct in that environment, so as much as you keep it to be real and you believe it's real and it's coming and their lights are coming and their presence is coming, well then you should answer that question, you know, yourself. That you feel that, you know, it's real, of course I'm not going to call him in a place that's not appropriate and that uh, if I have fear or call and, and, you know, just for entertainment purposes I'm not going to call. So it has to be something that you're, you're feeling that you need, you have a test that you have to take so you make your madad, you have a job interview and things that you need support so then that's the time to make the madad, inshaAllah. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam uh, Can you please help me out, I can't focus on my prayers due to black magic, what should I do? Yeah, you should uh, read all our articles on, on, the, on the booklet on black magic, the whole section on the energy and everybody with these types of things they should just email us at the help me at nurmuhammad, help me nurmuhammad.com. We have articles on the black magic, I know a lot of subcontinent uh, people they keep talking about black magic, that's a default to, to say I'm not a good businessman, you know it's hard to say I'm not a good businessman. So they say, oh black magic is ruining my business. But well, shaykh doesn't have a du'a for making you a good businessman. So this is just a default from subcontinent that everything is black magic, black magic. Let me tell you the reality, if you had magic on you and a devil is on you, there's no way you could be asking me this question right now nor could you be typing anything on that computer nor could you be watching our majlis. They would have scratched you, hit you, beat you and you can't even get near this phone or this connection. So you, you have no idea what being attacked is. They'll throw you across the room and, and rip you to pieces, so that's not an attack. So just blaming everything on black magic, no just read the zikrs, do the energy, do the, the meditation, do all the spiritual practices inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi. Um, what should we do for night terrors? Recently I've had a lot of night terrors. Yeah, a lot of, lot of bad energy everywhere, a lot of, lot of uh, bad energies. I, we, we've given that theme for the last year now, so there's a horrific amount of energies that are just going everywhere and that's why this permission is, is spreading uh, to, to teach people how to make the connection, how to make the madad. And all the section on, on meditation, keep wudu before you sleep, don't ever sleep without wudu because you have no spiritual protection, they just come right over you and, and, and you know stop you from even being able to move. You have to have been trained on how to make madad so it's just a second nature for you to make madad and then asking for support to come to fight them because you can't fight them. So when you ask for madad and support they come to fight them, you should have the taweezes in the home play the salawats in the home so that the house is like a masjid filled with these realities, filled with these uh, positive spiritual beings so that to, to fight off these types of difficulties. 
So a whole package of that and you can uh, email at helpme at nurmuhammad.com and then they get the series of emails that go over all of these subjects with links to those videos inshaAllah and those articles. As Salaamu Sayyidi This is uh, Alhamdulillah Sayyidi, we did our first congregational khatim ikhwaj gone last night with the family and kids, everyone enjoyed it, thank you so much. Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah, Alhamdulillah. Someone's asking uh, if we can use candles during our meditation practices and while doing awrad. Yeah, inshaAllah. Candles are uh, very blessed. Every time you light a candle Allah makes an angel to appear and that angel prays for you during that whole worshipness. Until the candle is extinguished, the, that angel is praying for you continuously. So candles are, are very blessed in, in spiritual practices and around the person who's reading Qur'an and, and making salawats and, and doing tafakkur inshaAllah. Remember to turn it off so you don't have a fire hazard inshaAllah. <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi, what, what's the best way to grow or increase our love in our heart for the path? The salawats inshaAllah with the meditation and all the different spiritual practices, those are the ways and that's why they're teaching. This is a way of love so when you're making the salawats and you want to be with whom you love. If you want to be with Prophet how to be with him is that you make one salawat. As soon as you make a salawat Prophet soul and ruhaniyat is with you. So that's why our shaqeen they, they do immense amount of salawat because they want the presence, the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad and they sweeten their tongue with these salawats and they never stop inshaAllah. So this is the, the most beautiful way and the, the fragrant yourself with this durood al-sharif and reading the nats and, and all of these practices, attending the majlis of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these uh, associations they bring that light and bring that love, listen to the talks, subscribe to the channel so that a continuous flow of these knowledges and Muhammadan haqqaiqs are flowing into your home and into your ear and into your heart inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Can you please guide us on how to keep more of a balance, not to go into two extremes, not becoming a hermit? but not becoming too much the love for dunya, how can we keep a balance? That's your struggle. You know in, in these days of isolation and everybody in their home, is it, not much more you can do to, to go out and there's not many places people can go out. So I don't think a lot of, a lot of people have you know the, the, the danger of going out so much. But uh, try to do the salawat, try to do the, the meditation, try to do all of these practices and build your energy. And inshaAllah you build your energy and everybody is advancing to the degree in which Allah wrote for them. You may be someone who wants to advance very fast but if Allah didn't write it, it doesn't, it doesn't give the himmah for that servant to even do that much. So this is all in, in Allah's will, in Allah's hand that how much the servant is going to do and how fast they're going to approach. But right now it's more important to focus on doing the practices and, and, and uh, achieving the spiritual zeal within the heart and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and then balancing back you know that if you're not uh, going out enough and you're not doing enough then you can balance later that I don't go anywhere, to do all my zikr all the time, I pray all the time. Then the shaykh can say, okay now you can you know go here and there with your family. But until then just to worry about this in your mind then this is just you know, this is the talk of other people. Oh don't follow these people because then you're going to be a hermit. No, it's not that easy to be a hermit. It's not that easy thinking you're going to sit down and you're going to do 10,000 salawats without moving. Most people can't sit for two seconds without you know getting up and go make an email and go play on their computer and play on their phone. It's not something that comes easy at all. So those are just philosophies. But actual practice is very difficult. Shaitan doesn't let the person just sit, the nafs doesn't allow the person to sit to do the practices and those are very rare people that they can sit and just go for hours. But it's not something that's easily achievable. 
People are sending salams and Laylatul Mubarak Mubarak. Walaykum salam, walaykum salam to everyone out there, everyone on Facebook, YouTube. Please share the feeds and uh, put onto your Facebook pages, share all of the, the articles. That way we can get more and more people to subscribe, inshaAllah. Allah bless you all and, and, and grant you your, your desires and take away difficulties and bless your family, your children, and communities, inshaAllah. And keep us under the, the banner of Sayyidina Muhammad under the holy nazar and to be raised at the feet of Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah under the love of Zahir al-Bayt, under the love of Ashab al-Nabi and under the love of awliyaullah fi samahi wa fi la bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.